Hey there, Booksmiths. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to actually do the walkthrough of the Eris's Gambit. I know I said I would take care of this about two weeks ago. It's hard to believe it, it has been two weeks since the uh, sample codex was released. It feels like it's been a lifetime since then when it comes to AI. Time moves very quickly. So I wanted to go ahead and just take you through what I did, bring up some of the things that maybe I would do a little bit differently. And I've actually done differently in the next version, which the next sample codex is already out. And we'll talk about that in another video. But let's go ahead and we'll go through this one down. The Eris's Gambit is, again, a mafia romance codex. And it's to write a, I would say, fifty to 75,000 word mafia romance story. And uh, I'll just take you through the page here when you get the Eris's Gambit, you will get access to this page. And you have the ability to download the codex export file. If you've watched any of my other videos, uh, you will know I don't actually recommend using that. I actually recommend using this database here and going through and using this to set up your uh, codex in Novel Crafter. And again, this one is actually 35 codex entries. And then if you come down here, I've got some prompts for you that you can just copy and put into your Novel Crafter. So we've got the Dark Romantic S Suspense Developmental Editor. We have my Experimental Generate Scene Brief as well, which hopefully here in the next week, this will be getting an upgrade as well. I had some thoughts and I can't wait to uh, play with it some more. Also, we've got our active scene beats from summary and the blurb copywriter. And if you come down here to the chats, this is very long, but you'll see the name of the prompt that I used in chat as well as what model I used. Now, this is the first sample codex where I have used Claw 3.5 Sonnet almost exclusively. I think there was only one chat. I want to say maybe this outline. Yeah, I use chat GPT 4.0 in this, this one specifically, but all of the rest were 3.5s. I think that's about it. There's some additional information here, instructions on how I can add your codex for you and whatnot. But let's go ahead and we're going to go over to Novel Crafter. And we will take a look here. So I actually created from scratch a framework for you. And that is available in the codex file or the codex database. And it walks you through step by step what needs to happen. It doesn't have, it's not by chapter. It just says the things that need to happen as you set up this mafia romance. And if we come down here, we create the outline. We've got the hook, the pitch, the premise that are all built in chat, as well as the scene list. We've got all of our characters. Now, these characters are going to be a little bit different than we have had in the past. Again, this is my first sample codex that's a romance. So it's built a bit differently because romances are built quite a bit differently than other stories. Normally you have a single protagonist and you're going to see what happens from their point of view throughout the entire story. And with this one, I do have, it's going to alternate between Zara who is the female protagonist and Maxim, who is the male protagonist. I also added one of the antagonists in there too, to get his point of view in at least four of the scenes. So I'll show you how I did that here in a few minutes when we go to the chats, but let's go here. We'll look at Zara, who is our protagonist. Um, she's got a lot of nicknames. I, I wasn't sure what I was going to need. I definitely wanted to put a, uh, in, term of endearment in there for her husband to give to her. And then being that she is going to become the wife of the Bratva leader, I had to add a couple other things in here too. Instead of having a separate area where I put her appearance, I actually included it in here. The jury's still out, honestly, with me on whether I like this or not. As you've seen in previous sample codices, I tend to put things like her appearance and her voice in another 
codex entry. That way, if I need to disconnect it, I can. I went ahead and I put it in here. There was just a lot of entries. So I tried to streamline everything down and uh, make it easy to add. So we've got her age, we've got her appearance, her voice, her mannerisms, background, uh, personality, key traits, fears, desires, quirks, pet name, which is something I added uh, myself that the LLM didn't even suggest, as well as her character arc. The other characters that are secondary characters also have a lot of things in here as well as the love interests. So other characters like her parents have very little information in here. It's just very cut and dry. This is exactly what we need to know about these people. So we'll move on. So we've got a lot of locations in this one. We've actually got 12. And the again, the location information it's a little bit sparse. If you're going to write this, you might want to add a little bit more information to it. And we have a couple safe houses, beach houses, estates. One thing I did with the estate. So this is the estate that she's going to be staying at that belongs to the hero. The master suite, they're going to be in there a lot. So I went ahead and actually created a separate location for that individual room. That way you have a bit more information about that location. And we get interesting here when we come down to the lore. So I wanted to know what the mob looked like and what the Bratva looked like. What was the structure and key members and some cultural elements. So this is the things that separate them from other people and what that makes them different. Whereas we also have these shared underworld customs, which are things that both the mob and the Bratva have in common. So if we come here to our Bratva. We have also, again, our structure for the leadership, key members, and our cultural elements. And then I also have both the Bratva and the Irish mob have what's called these uh, relationships and connections. So this is, you know, there's an uneasy alliance between the two groups and they have business relationships, rivalries, and other neutral parties such as the Italian mafia and the triad. So it, it's important to have this information to give your world a bit more, I guess you want to make it a little bit more realistic by having more than just what's in the actual story and knowing what's going on around them. Okay. And in this one, I also included what's called intimacy guidelines. This is going to be a little bit different. This is the first sample codex where there is that possibility of some not safe for work content. And so I wanted to be very specific. So how is it going to progress? What are the key stages and chapters where those stages take place? And that's actually going to be uh, referring to this stages of intimacy. And I will, I'm not going to show it because I don't need to upset the, the gods of YouTube, but you can actually go through and take a look at these stages of intimacy and you'll understand what I'm talking about. So, you know, through chapter 20, this is how things are going to progress. And I've got in here the Russian terms of endearment and power dynamic information about their arc and dominance and submission. So I'm not going to go any further than that, but you can definitely, if you wanted to make something that was a little on the sweeter side, you can dial this down. If you want to make something that goes the other direction, have fun with that. And then as usual, I've got my prose style guide, which is in here. We talk about pacing, dialogue, descriptive style, voice and point of view. Oh, and sentence structure as well as we have our story genre. We've got the dark romantic suspense. Okay, let's go over to the chat and we're going to begin just quickly going through those. Open the thread here. And this one is quite lengthy and this 
the whole content, everything is actually available in the Notion document that you can read, you can follow along. Now, one thing you'll notice is that when I started writing this story, I actually came and I brought my own names. I've been really unhappy with the names that the LLMs have ge been generating. And for me, it's a bit of a pain in the butt to start generating something with one name and then go and then have to change it and then have, you know, half the thing is in one person's name and then then you edit it later and it's a big mess. I want to avoid messes. So it gave me uh, a number of different ideas as well as it included the tropes as well. And we'll see a lot more with tropes. For those of you who are in the AI toolkit, I am working on the Codex Vault. And inside of the Codex Vault, there is going to be a bunch of tropes that you'll actually be able to pull right into your Codex. They'll already be all ready to go for you. If you don't have the AI toolbox, go ahead and go check that out. So then I came back and... I gave it some more additional information. I went through actually all of the tropes here and I was like, okay, some of them I like, some of them I don't like. And I went ahead and I made a list of the ones that I did want. Sent it back and they went ahead and gave us a new story idea. And that's how we ended up with the heiress's gambit. And then I went into building my characters Okay. And then I revised the characters from that point. This is the point also where if there was something that I wanted changed, such as the names, uh, I actually did it here. The maid originally had a different name and I named her to Tatiana. And I think there was another one. Oh, Dmitry Volkov. I changed his name as well. And I actually removed a character completely because I didn't think he had any value. So poor Jason, he didn't make it into the story. So then I took my revisions and it came back and gave me a revised list of the characters, including that information that I asked for. We moved into the settings again. This is a very similar process that, to what I used in the uh, previous sample codices. And there are a lot. There are 15 of them originally, and I, I cut down a couple of them. So then we went to the pitch, hook, and premise. And it gave me an initial pitch, hook, and premise for the story. And then I got how the characters talk and what they look like. So we'll scroll through those. There were some things that I didn't like, and so I actually told it what I wanted. And it gave it back to me again with my edits. Okay. And then I actually told it very specifically that I wanted it to build the codex entries for me. And so it gave me something that was, it wasn't great. It was very minimal information. And I like to pat it on the back. Good job. That's not quite what I wanted. And then I told it very specifically, please write the entries, how an AI writing assistant is going to need to consume it basically to bring the characters to life on the page. And so now they look much better. So there's a lot more information here on these characters after I asked that information. So that gives me the main three characters. And then I said, great, give me some less detailed entries for the remaining ones. And so that's where we got the other entries from is right here. One thing I'll let you know is you can actually come here to extract if you're doing this on your own, you can actually come in here and extract it and you can pop these entries right into your codex. So I have a habit of forgetting about that. So I just wanted to bring that up to you. You can also append information, I believe, to what you already have in there. So if you already have a entry for a specific person, you can actually add additional stuff to it as well. Okay. And then I did a similar prompt with the book Bible entries or the codex entries for the locations. And then I said to include an information that an AI writing assistant would need to know to be able to use it as a setting. And then that this is what we got from that. 
And I asked it a question because it wanted the mansion to be a brownstone. I'm like, how can the the mansion be a brownstone? That doesn't make any sense. And then I figured it would be better if they had more of a compound. And then it would actually need to be on the outskirts of town, not necessarily inside of town to give them the privacy that they would need. And then I was thinking, hey, if they need to be in town, why don't we have a penthouse? So I went ahead and had the LLM give me that information back. It made a couple changes to existing places and also added in the penthouse. And then I told it, hey, I want you to remove these, this one and include it into this one. And what's actually the name of the nightclub that they use as a front? And also to change just safe house to a specific safe house. Because I wanted that to be where Finn took the heroine after he kidnapped her. So just building up what the LLM gives you and just refining the information and continuing to mold it in the direction that you want to. You're not just taking, putting stuff in there and letting it drive the story for you. It's a collaborative process. So it's give and take. Here we are. Uh, we're actually going to have it refine the pitch hook and premise. And then this is the pitch hook and premise that I actually ended up putting in the codex. Okay. There was one thing that kind of was lingering in the back of my mind. And it was, how did he become the leader of the Bratva in Boston? And it gave me the story of how it happened. And then I was able to actually add this into the background for his character profile. And then I asked it, it to provide me that list of key members, relationships, connections, and rivalries, as well as the organizational breakdown and character map for the broad button, the Irish mob. And that's where I got those. So if you have other organizations, this is a great way of filling them out and Declan Brady and Rory Donnelly, they don't even exist in any of my other stuff. It just made these guys up. If for some reason they became important, then I could go in and create a codex entry about them. But as they are, I don't really need it. It just, again, gives it some additional meat. Let's see. So this is where I came to using the framework to create the outline. And remember, as I do with all of my other codices, I start with a framework and nothing else. So everything else is built up from that point. So use the framework, create an outline for a story that is 34 chapters long. I wish I would have done 24 chapters, not 34. Looking back, it just made it really super long and it made it really difficult to work with, for me at least. You can have... Uh, a lot more scenes than 34 chapters. So it, some of my chapters actually have multiple scenes in it. But just keep that in mind. The more chapters you have, the more confusing things get. And you can always go in and split chapters if you need more length. So just something to think about. This is actually where I told it that I wanted to have most chapters from either Zara or Maxim's first person point of view. But then I also wanted four of them to be from Finn's point of view, since he's the primary antagonist. Information here was really key. When determining the point of view for a chapter, consider which character has the most to lose. So if you're having a hard time getting it to come up with a decent outline, try adding these words because I think it really worked great for this. So here we go. It went into creating all the different chapters. And then I asked it to give me two additional extended scenes that I could use to get people on my email list. So... I'm thinking about marketing even before I write my story. And this is something that is an opportunity for you, especially if you're writing romance is you can think about extended scenes. You can think about cut scenes. You can think about prequels that you don't end up releasing. There's a lot of information here that you're generating 
that you're not going to end up using. And this is an opportunity for you to bring people onto your email list. So it gave me this brought for Christmas as well as a honeymoon in St. Petersburg. We'll come down here to genre of the story. It is a dark romantic suspense. And then it, I also asked it to provide me a style guide that an AI can use to write the prose. And here that is. And you can edit this to your heart's content. And let's see. What other information would be helpful for an AI to write this story? This is how I figured out how to create those intimacy guidelines. And I wanted it to follow the 12 stages of intimacy. And I went ahead and this is me working out what was going to go into intimacy guidelines. And I think that is it here. Okay, so let's move on to the rest of the chats. I know that we're running a bit long. Now in this chat, I wanted it to provide me a version of the outline that I could use to put into Novel Crafter. I think I generated the list of scenes separately because I didn't like the way it did it the first time. And I'm not sure if this is the final one that I used or if I used a different one. I had a chat that disappeared. so. I think I may have redone it for you just so you can see what I did. But here is that. And then here we have our creating the uh, scene brief. And you can see that it gave me my initial scene brief and my beats weren't that good. I gave it some notes back on what else I wanted in the scene brief. And so it fixed that section for me. But again, the scene beats were bad. So then what I did is, is I actually switched to the active scene beat from summary because you can actually switch back and forth from different uh, prompts while you're in a chat, which is really cool. Uh, and I just told it to please rewrite the scene beats. So then it took everything it had generated before and all the information that was in here and it made better scene beats. So these are uh, a bit thicker, probably. I would probably mix the first two together, the second two, and therefore actually only have five scene beats because they come out with about 400 words and this is way too short of a beat and it, it ends up coming out really super lean. So you can either do that or you can go by hand and just put more information in the actual scene beat itself and you'll get much better prose that way. Okay. The last chat I had was doing the blurb. So I asked it to use the hook, pitch, and premise to write me a blurb for the story. And so it gave me this nice little blurb. And then I was able to take that into ChatGPT and have it start developing some ideas for book covers so that I could ultimately come up with a cover concept. So that takes us through the chats. If we go here to write, I started writing it, but again, I'm not really thrilled with these scene beats. I definitely would need to make them much more information. Another thing that I overlooked is also using pronouns as opposed to the character's name. Uh, when it comes to pronouns, the LLM doesn't like them. If you're not specific on who you were talking about, sometimes it can think it's someone else other than your character that you actually are talking about. Another thing I wanted to bring to your attention that I didn't realize until I was speaking to Space Emotion is that, so you've got this awesome chapter scene brief thing here. It's not pulling this when it is running the scene beat if you're just using the general purpose prompt. So with the general purpose prompt, um, it isn't looking here, but it is looking down at the other scenes. So 
it actually might hurt you in the short term if you are using that general prose prompt because it's actually looking to the next scene already, but it's not looking here. I'm going to have to create a new prose prompt that actually pulls in my scene brief. So that is going to be forthcoming. I just learned that here this week. If it feels like the LLM is trying to rush you to the next chapter, it's because it is. So we'll get it figured out. But that's it. That's what we've got here for the Heiress's Gambit. We've got the 39, excuse me, 35 entries, as well as the chats for this as well. And I'm looking forward to see what you guys create with this. Being that it was the first romance one, there's definitely a lot of things that I want to do differently going forward, but I'm pretty proud of what I put here together for you guys. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you guys create some amazing dark romances and I'll see you guys next time.